If you want to keep your business running smoothly for a long period of time, you must learn how to manage cash. And if your company is in the early stages of development, neglecting finances is like putting an axe through your own foot. Consequently, I'm going to explain you how to manage funds and finances in a small business setting. Cash Flow Management the ability to maintain a positive cash flow in any firm is essential for success. Cash flow refers to the ease with which money is received and dispersed. It implies that the flow of your income and expenditures must be carefully monitored and managed. Difference between positive and negative cash flow When your business revenue exceeds its expenses, this is referred to as having positive cash flow. In other words, when you have more revenue than your expenses, you have a positive cash flow, which must be maintained if you want to be in business. It is only from positive cash flow that you will be profitable in your firm. Your business is said to have negative cash flow if its expenses outweigh its revenues. As a result, your company is most likely experiences a financial loss. The absence of positive cash flow is a bad indicator for any organization. However, if your company is in its earliest stages or if you have only recently launched your company, you should not be concerned about negative cash flow because there could be a variety of reasons for negative cash flow. It is possible that your expenses are more than usual, but that you are not earning enough revenue from your consumers. In other words, because your company is still in its starting phase, it is possible that it has not yet begun to generate revenue. If you are in the business to business sector, you should pay close attention to your payment terms. It's possible that your clients have passed you payments or that you have unpaid bills on your books. A variety of payment terms are available to different businesses. A number of firms demand you to pay for a good up to 30 days after you have made the transaction. Others may require that you pay within 15 days of making your order. Consider the following scenario. If your payment term is 90 days and you must pay your employees as well, during those 90 days you must also bear the expenses of your inventory, office supplies, utility bills and other expenses because these are the types of expenses that are certain to arise each month. But you do not earn any cash because of your 90 day payment term. And this could result in negative cash flow for your company. Try to maintain a positive cash flow at the startup phase of your firm so that money flows in and out smoothly and you don't run out of funds too quickly after beginning your company. If you have negative cash flow, it is likely that your company will experience a decrease in funds because their expenses exceed their actual earnings. How to manage cash flow? What steps can you take to better manage your cash flow? You can, however, prepare a financial statement to assist you in managing your cash flows. You can use this section to keep track of the income and expenses associated with your company. If you are starting a business, I would recommend that you prepare monthly financial statements. Profit and loss statements should be prepared on a monthly basis so that you can simply keep track of your earnings and expenses. Separate Financial Statements If you are the company's owner, you should avoid combining your personal financial statements with those of your company. Keep them apart from one another. That way, you would be able to keep track of both your personal and business expenses relatively easily. If you have a separate current account, you would be aware that any money I spend from this account is for the benefit of my own firm and not for any personal use or expenditure. In order to be successful, all business owners must maintain their personal financial statements and their company's financial statements separate from one another. Projected Profit and Loss 
So far, we have looked at all of the income and expenses. We didn't do any forecasting or planning for the future. As a result, we will now prepare our projected financial statement for the upcoming quarter or in other words, for the next three months. Making a financial statement for at least one quarter would be extremely important to the company's overall success. We will determine where we will incur expenses and how much money we will spend in the upcoming quarter. And we'll break down this financial statement into three sections. The first section is for the best case scenario. The second section is for the worst case scenario. And the third section is for the most likely scenario. In the best case scenario, we can say that our income exceeds our expenses. There are many reasons for this, including an increase in sales or a decrease in operating expenses. In the worst case scenario, it is possible that we will lose our current customers and thus cease to generate income, or that our expenditures will increase as a result of possibly hiring a large number of new employees or purchasing expensive machinery, resulting in an increase in our expenses for that particular month or that particular quarter. As a result, we will have a negative cash flow during that period. In the most likely scenario, you will be able to establish a situation that is comfortable for you based on your goals for your company in the upcoming quarter. A projected financial statement can be created in this manner and if you are currently experiencing positive cash flow, you should strive to achieve a cash flow that is better than this in the future. If you are currently experiencing negative cash flow, Make an effort to reduce your losses for the upcoming period. You will be able to expand your business relatively slowly and steadily in this manner. Break-even analysis is the process of determining the point at which our income equals our expenditures. Alternatively, how much money should we earn to cover all of our expenses from that specific source of income in order to avoid incurring a loss? Our break-even point would be the moment at which we do not create any profit but do not incur any loss at the same time. How to achieve break-even point? If you have already reached your break-even point, this is a good indicator for your company because it means you are now attempting to generate a profit from it. For those who have not yet reached break-even point, you should compute the total expenses for each month and attempt to determine your average monthly expenses as well as the amount of money you earn on an average monthly basis. Additionally, determine at what pace you would need to expand your income in order to achieve the break-even point in the future and how long it will take you in months or years to break even on your company. When it comes to turning a loss-making firm into a profitable one, break-even is absolutely critical to success. If you are running a small business, this is the most critical aspect to remember. If your firm is currently working smoothly, it is not guaranteed that it will continue to run smoothly in the future. It is possible that you will be required to purchase additional machinery as a result of an unforeseen problem or as a result of the failure of your existing machines. So your expenses will increase and if you have an emergency fund, you will be able to easily absorb these expenses without incurring any financial losses in your business and your firm will continue to operate smoothly. You might use your emergency funds for any unexpected situation that necessitates the expenditure of a significant sum of money. If you are starting a business, it is critical that you have an emergency fund in place because failing to do so will result in your company being forced to close its doors.